again, John McLennan here, and in this video, you're gonna learn how to play Cocaine as recorded by Eric Clapton on guitar. Now, this is the first video in a new series that I'm starting here on the channel, and in this series, we're gonna dive into how to play every single song from Eric Clapton's classic album, Slow Hand. Now, this album has some incredible guitar playing on it, and I'm super pumped to dive into it with you. But before we jump into the first lesson, if you're new to the channel, I wanna hook you up with a gift right away. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that's so useful for learning songs and being able to improvise as well. It's gonna show you five chords and five scales, and with those shapes, you can play anywhere on the neck. And I wanna give this to you completely for free. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. So hope you enjoy that as my gift to you. And with that said, let's break down this song. All right, so there are two main sections that you need to know for this song. One is called figure one and then figure two. I'm gonna break those down for you. Then I'm also gonna show you a solo section at the end where we're gonna dive into three awesome Clapton style licks that are gonna kickstart your soloing over this chord progression. So make sure you stay till the end. The first thing we're gonna dive into is figure one and that goes like this. Three, four. <laughs> All right, so we're just using two chords here. We're playing an E chord and a D chord. Now the way that I play these is the seventh fret of the fifth string and then nine, 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 just doing a bar there on strings four, three, and two. So that's a typical, what I call an A shape bar chord. And Clapton actually uses his pinky. So he uses his index and his pinky like this. You could use your ring finger. In other songs, I've seen him do that as well, of course. You know, so they're, they're kind of interchangeable, those two, whichever's comfortable for you. So we're gonna play E there, and then we're gonna drop this down. Our next chord is D. And this is on the fifth fret, five, seven, seven, seven. Now really with these chords, you're focusing on just those middle strings. So we're muting off the sixth string and the first string. Now rhythmically, we're gonna go. So we have this two bar figure, we're gonna play two strums on the E. So E, E, then drop it down two frets, D for one strum, and then back up to E. So it's E, E, D, E. And rhythmically, those are eighth notes. So one and two and, then we rest. Three and four and. Then we go back down to D on the and of four. So I want you to count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Then we let that D ring basically all the way through the second measure. So all together it goes. Four, then repeat. So that's figure one. Now a quick tip, if those bar chords are too hard, you could always play power chords instead. So that would look like this, seven, nine, nine. I could do a three finger power chord. I could even do a two finger power chord. That's a great sound too. So. Whichever way is comfortable for you is fine. Now the next part is figure two, and this is how we get out of that first part. So the first part is going, just repeating that, and then, you know, Clapton comes in singing, you know, if you wanna hang out, you got to take a round cocaine. So that goes over and over four times basically on that figure. And then we go. One, two, three, four. And we do what's called a walk down progression. So I'm gonna take the same shape that we were playing here, our major chord, and we're just gonna walk it down from E down to D, down to C, 
and then the last one is gonna be B. So it's gonna go whole step, whole step, and then half step. Now rhythmically, we have some syncopation until the last chord. So it's gonna go three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So they're all on ands until beat three, we play that B chord. So three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And then we come back in with figure one. So that's it. We basically just play that vamp, which is figure one, and then when we do the hook, you know, she don't lie, she don't lie, she don't lie, we do the walk down. All right, next, as I mentioned, let's talk about soloing over this progression. Now, the go-to scale that Clapton uses is really an E blues scale. So I wanna show you some licks, diving into a bit of that. Here's the first one. All right, so we're starting out here on the 12th fret of the fourth string, and we're gonna go 12 to 14. Then we're gonna go to the 12th fret on the third string and do a little bluesy pull there. Then go back to the 14th fret of the fourth string. So. And those are short there. Then we'll finish with this. So really all of this is right out of your E blues scale, just a couple notes. 12, 14, 14, 12, 14, 14. Then we finish with 12, 12 on the third string, then play 14 on the fourth string, and slide off. So we're starting there on beat two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and a four and one and two and three and four and. Here it is with a little bit of backing. All right, the next lick is one that I think Clapton got from Jimi Hendrix, and it sounds like this. All right, so we're starting out with what's called a unison bend. And this is the 14th fret of the third string. We're gonna bend that up, and we're gonna also grab the second string there on the 12th fret. We're gonna go. So it starts actually on beat four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and. Then as we're bent up, we pluck it again and bring it down. Then we stay here and get this dissonance basically between the, the 14th fret now not bent and the 12th fret of the second string. Two, three, four. So we basically start that on beat two and play three once we've released it down. So, so, so far, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Then we go. Now we go to just a bluesy little fill here on one string at a time. 14, 12. Then 14 on the fourth string. And then 12, 14, 14, 12. 
just a couple notes, like <laughs> going back between those two, but Clapton makes it sound so good. So here it is all together. One, two, three. <laughs> And with a little bit of backing. Here it is again. All right, one more lick. This is example number three, and it sounds like this. All right, so this lick starts right after beat two. We're gonna count one again to two. So that starts with this launching point lick, and I actually first learned this from T-Bone Walker, but here we're gonna play the 14th fret of the third string, and then 12, 12. Then 15, 12 on the second string, then come down, 15, 14, 12 on the third string, and that is purely just your blue scale there. Then, that's bending on 14 of the third string, then come back to 12, then 14, 14, 12, 14, Now this happens off the D in the second part of the figure. So one and two and three and four and one and two. That's where Clapton typically plays it. So here's what it sounds like with a little bit of backing. So have fun putting those licks together and make sure you've got down the rhythm as well. So this really gives you kind of a full spectrum lesson here where you have the main rhythm parts and then you can practice those along with the recording and then you can start diving into soloing as well. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and to help you even more, be sure to grab my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about with these scales and connections connecting the chords together with them, and it's completely for free. So just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide, or click the first link down below as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and if you like Eric Clapton, be sure to check out this video next.